come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Hey, do us a favor. Wherever you found us, go over and hit that like or subscribe button. Leave us a review. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And we'd appreciate it. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly, Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie that was chosen by. Holly. Holly, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called Broken Arrow. Not the 1950s one. Not, we didn't watch the Rod Stewart song or whatever you were We didn't watch the music video by Rod Stewart either, no. Okay. <laughs> no, a this classic, is Classic, really. Which one? The song or the movie? Broken well, Arrow. In my opinion, okay. equally. What year was this movie made? This when movie was, was made in 1996. And it was directed by? John Woo. And how do we know John Woo? We know John Woo from um, mainly Paycheck and Hard Target. Get the fuck. Mainly Paycheck and Hard Target. Go and no. No. Possibly Face Off. Possibly Face Off. You shut your mouth. As Holly trolls us. Uh, yes, this, this man has a has a dub store, and that's what John Lowe has. Man, I, you know, I still haven't seen Paycheck. Is that any good? What? <laughs> no, it's no. not. It's horrible. <laughs> that's the first movie I fell asleep in. Yeah? Got it. In the yeah, theater, you're I, like, all right, that's the Ben Affleck. Like, yeah, is yeah. it him and well, Uma Thurman? We were friends. We were sitting in, like, the second row, and I was out in the first, like, eight minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well... Uh, I mean, I remember, are, are you guys, well, I don't know. I mean, do you remember the, the John Woo phenomenon of like the, uh, the early 1990s? Yeah. Hard boiled and, and the killer well, yeah. uh, hard boiled mission impossible Two. No, no, uh, no, no, no. The phenomenon of John Woo was the, all he was like, um, cause I think at that point the killer became like one of the, the, like the highest grossing movie ever re- uh, that came out of Hong Kong next to like enter the dragon or something at that point in time. I mean, John Woo was the epitome of cool action cinema. This was, you know, I mean, when we were coming out of the uh, late, late eighties action, we got Hong Kong action cinema and the name on that was John Woo. Yeah. It was primarily from the killer. And then he followed that up with hard boiled. And then somewhere we got, I get to see an older one, which was a better tomorrow. And then there's a better tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, were were you guys like around for that? Or is this before your time when this was, I mean, it was like the indie age of, uh, uh, you know, here in movies. And well, then we got, I mean, my, it, it was like at, at this time I was like, you know, in grade school. So I wasn't getting what was big in the rest of the world. I was getting what was big in America, which was face off and, and broken arrow, you know? I, I, so I didn't get the phenomenon that, that was John Woo at the time. So I was too young. Have you seen any of the, of his Hong Kong stuff? I mean, I recognize like stills from it, so I recognize the imagery, but I haven't actually watched any of it now. Okay, well, you may want to go I've back seen, and um, check those out because. Oh, sorry. I've seen like his later kind of stuff, like Red Cliff. Oh, you've seen that? How's that? Yeah, it's it's good. I mean, it's really long. It's two parts, you know. But yeah, that's like his good. epic thing. He went back to Hong Kong or back to to. Was that a Chinese Chinese movie that he did there? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think like his last couple have been uh, uh, Chinese. He like left Hollywood. Went back mm-hmm. home. Um, Dude has so many credits. My God. Yeah, he does. Yeah, because he started with, um, I think he started with, with, as everybody does probably in the Hong Kong film industry, started with the uh, Shaw Brothers and, uh, you know, doing movies with Jackie Chan as choreographer and stuff like that. But I think, I think, I think, I'm not positive, but I think A Better Tomorrow was his first uh like soul directorial movie and it was you know a uh like um yakuza movie kind of well it wouldn't be the yakuza that's japanese it was a gangster but hong kong gangster movie right mm-hmm. but i think that one also somebody's gonna have to correct me if i'm wrong i know obviously chow yun fat became synonymous with it was like john woo chow yun fat right you know the actor yeah uh i think they were both in that in that movie um and chow yun fat became like you know 
the coolest guy on the fucking planet, you know, yeah. back at that time. There's a lot of John Woo always to me seemed to mean uh, slow motion shootouts. The like, bullet ballet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the two gun, two gun mambo or whatever. Like uh, your guy <laughs> yeah. would always have two guns jumping backwards, shooting them at somebody else who was also jumping back. I mean, it was, you know, very dynamic yep. cinema. There was nothing really like that in, uh, in what American cinema was, was doing American action movies at the time were doing. So of course that means we wanted to bring him over here. And Naturally. I was kind of surprised that his first movie was going to be a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie of all fucking things. <laughs> and it was a hard target. I mean, that doesn't really surprise me because, I mean, as close minded as American cinema can be, it's like, oh, let's bring this really great Hong Kong filmmaker over and let him do a, a martial arts movie because that's what he should do. You know, they don't give him something bigger. They give him a Van Damme movie. Which is weird because he really didn't do martial, you know, I mean, he had experience with them, but he got famous for like gun movies, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. But that's not how Americans see things usually. Well, that Especially was like, a, I think Sam Raimi had something to do with that movie, maybe as like a producer or something, or Robert Tappert did Sam Raimi's producing buddy. But I heard that um, the American studio system and the way that it, it, it wanted, you know, the movie to come out was very different than what John Woo wanted. So like they cut the hell out of it and made like, an, you know, here's how it will, it would appeal to American audiences. And of course, you know, I don't think he it was English speaking, uh, strongly at that point in time. And so that, as yeah. he was getting kind of acclimated to the, the culture, there's a lot of things that he lost the argument on, which I think, you know, as his career went on, he's like, no, 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 no I want to do it, you know, a certain way and have yeah, this that's, actually that's done. Definitely what happened in the case of this movie, this movie was good. Was supposed, and his cut was two hours long and the studio made him cut like 15 minutes out of it, which had a lot of character development and a lot of, uh, a lot more violence, a lot more effects. Um, so this is still in the era of him being um, kind of censored by the studio. I can see why they would. This is still a pretty lengthy movie. even It is. It's, it's an hour and 48 minutes. So it's still a long movie. Well, John Woo usually deals in, I mean, there's like, well, I don't know. I don't want to say this, you know, actually I was missing the dove shot. That was also the thing that we had with uh, John Woo, right? Doves. There was always doves being released. Oh yeah. Sure, there's there's some, no, doves. <laughs> no doves in this one. Not, not like we get in face off where it's just like, but we had Nick butterflies. Cage opens a door and it's like right behind him. Yeah. I think the butterflies took the doves place. Yeah. There yeah. were birds yeah. in this. And there was, there was, he was, uh, he was doing these nature shots uh, butterflies <laughs> and a deer. Yeah. Which I think, deer. uh, is supposed to, you know, nature out of balance and all that kind of, uh, uh, I mean, that goes to like, I guess I was going to say an Eastern philosophy, but he's a Christian. So, you know, <laughs> he's got a, uh, yeah. um, the, um, there wasn't like a whole lot of uh, slow motion in this either, but it, usually his movies seem to revolve around two guys. Right. And, uh, they're both, in competition, uh, both on opposite sides of the law or a moral line um, that are competing with each other to find out who's the best. I mean, either that's explicitly stated or we get the idea that that's going on through a lot of his movies. That's also yeah. taking place here. But this movie, I don't know, was it written for John Woo or um, did he just get it as an assignment? Um, I, that I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't know if it was specifically written for him. Um, but it was specifically written after the phenomenon of speed, because this is a Graham Yost written movie and they were just like, give us more of what you gave us in speed. And that's how we, that's how we got this story. And speed um, so would have been 94. Speed was 94 and this was 96. Okay. Yeah. So they, they were like, okay, speed did amazing. Everyone loved it. We need more of that. And that's where this kind of came from, um, which is why like, on, if you watch, I watched, I watched speed just a few days ago, actually. And watching this, I was like, okay, this has a lot of speed vibes for sure. And I never really made that connection, but it's probably cause I haven't seen this in like 20 years. So mm -hmm. <laughs> let me ask you guys something. Cause this is, um, 
the action movie is not really my favorite genre. I always kind of, I mean, I, I enjoy them and I watch a lot of them, but I haven't really gone like, you know, I mean, uh, I, I guess I'd never be Just like sticking with Chuck Norris. Colin. The American action film is, you know, that's like the greatest genre in the world. But when is, what is there like a golden age of the American action movie? No, I think there's uh, a <clears throat> figure. I think we figure out different ways to do it over the years. And so there's, I think there's multiple golden ages of the action movie. Is there an action movie before like Die Hard 1980? No. <laughs> well, it depends on what you would consider action. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not, uh... not like, not like this. Not no. like, like you're saying, not like the prototypical American action movie. There'd be like a, a... A primary, uh, like an action movie prior to like 1980 would be, um, you know, I don't know. There's a, there's a, a there's a car chase at some point. Bullet, yeah, right? First, but, first thing that comes to my mind is like Bullet yeah. would be yeah. like an action movie before 1980. Yeah. So it's a cop drama with an, uh, the chase scene, you know, in the middle it's of like, it. Somewhere. Yeah. Like or a, it's, a cop drama with suspense and and car chase, yeah. Yeah, or Gator, where there's chases through the bayou, and at the end of it, there's people punching each other. And I suppose, you know, maybe if we're not considering, uh, you know, Hong Kong cinema, uh, yeah, martial arts movies, which were, I guess, designed, those are physical action movies. Yeah, that's a different action. But I think that First Blood, this is what I'm coming back to. First Blood was like the first <laughs> movie that I saw that was basically from the get-go to the end was like, we are, you know, uh, racing toward the, well, you had Road Warrior, right, around that time. Right. Uh, yeah. Mad Max before that, but that's not really even an action movie. So um, so then the, the action movie kind of evolves, but in the there's like this sweet spot in there somewhere, which I think this is in the middle of that. Because do you see movies like Broken Arrow now? Yes, it's the Fast and the Furious movies. Just those? But it seemed like the I mean, those are the biggest budget, most successful action movies, maybe of all time. Really? Well, they financially successful, kind of you're saying, yeah. When they keep cranking them out, they're on like what number nine or something like that now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Mission we uh, impossible. Um, as yeah. far as like, um, well, maybe uh, a smaller the, version of that. Um, guy yeah, Richie and we, and we still get we still get these like um, these like military based uh, dramatic movies. The, um, there was that Chris Hemsworth one that just came out on was it Netflix or Prime recently? Oh uh, yeah. Directed, what was it? I think it's Extraction. Yes, that something like that I think is comparable to. I've um, never even heard of this movie. Yeah, it's uh, directed by the, um, the the fucking Marvel Brothers. No, oh, the Ru- Russos. The Russos. The Russo Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, don't know. I haven't watched it, but that to me, that's immediately what I think of so is that kind of movie. Do you know the budget on Broken Arrow? I do. The budget was fifty million. Okay, so it's like, wow. yeah, it's one of those yeah. mid-range action movies where now it's like everything's a hundred million dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah that was nineteen ninety-six. Fifty million. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah, that's a lot of money in ninety-six. It'd be what, like a seventy million maybe now or something like that. I don't know. From ninety-six, that's, fourteen that's, years. Yeah, but they didn't make a hundred and fifty million dollar movies in nineteen ninety-six like they do now. Uh oh yeah, cause um I think um when was um uh, uh Independence Titanic. Day it was like the first movie to pass a hundred million. Was that Titanic? Titanic, yeah. That was what ninety eight. Yeah, that was the yeah. right. That was over a hundred. And that million was dollars. like a big deal that it cost that much to make. It was a big <laughs> moment in time. Yeah, yeah, because they'd yeah. run right up to the edge, but. That was the first one to go over a hundred million. It's like a movie about a boat. What are you doing? It's not, you know, the Matrix. Oh, um, and it's so much more than a boat, Colin. It's a love story. <laughs> a love boat to bring the money back. Okay, so uh, Broken Arrow. Then um, uh, who who stars in this movie? Stars in this movie, the ultimate heroes in 1996. We have John Travolta and Christian Slater. Come on. Powerhouse. Yeah. Well, I mean, what was Christian Slater doing at this time? You was, know, I have a potentially unpopular opinion. I don't think Christian Slater's a big deal. <laughs> I've never really gotten the hype with him. 
I would never. I, I mean, I kind of agree. I don't. Uh, I, I like him, but like he's not the draw for any. Right. Oh, Christian Slade is in it. I should go see that. No. He's perfectly passable, but yeah, he's nothing to write home about. Like, I mean, it's all been downhill since cuffs, let's just be honest. <laughs> but he was a bigger deal, I think, in those earlier movies, like uh, Pump Up the Volume and Heathers, you know, was a big splash and stuff like that before he moved into like, no, you're going to go to Hollywood and be an action hero. Although True Romance is a really fucking good movie, and he's good in yeah. that. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, so John Travolta w- is now several years into his resurgence after Quentin Tarantino saved him from not one, not two, but three Look Who's Talking movies. Colin, you say that those movies made a fuck ton of money. Yeah, they did. That first one made $300 million. Everyone likes to talk about early 90s Travolta being in the dumpster, but they made three of those movies, and the first one made $300 million. He yeah. was doing and, that fine. And I will be the first to admit, I watched the shit out of one and two when I was a kid. I watched like, all three of them constantly as a kid. Yeah, the, me too. That you watch when you're a kid. Like, yeah. I loved those movies. The third There's, one, though, even, even as a kid, I realized how shit the third one was. Right. But there's two, I watched them all the time. They're on, on TV talk- constantly, even still. Yeah, they you, are. You, you talk about, like, this, we have multiple golden ages of action movies. I think we have multiple golden ages of talking baby movies. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> bet, I'll bet anything on it. They keep coming back. Well, no, I was going for, I, I, this is my new project, finding the gold, the golden age of uh, of action movies, the silver age and all that other stuff. I don't know. Actually, you're saying- I'm going to go out on a limit. I, I actually think the early 2000s are worse for Travolta than the early 90s. Yeah. Way that's, worse. That's, that's probably fair. Like Wild Hogs, Old Dogs era, that's real. That's that's the lowest of the low, I think. Where, where you can uh, tell that he's wearing a wig. Like yeah. Once you got into that territory. And where like, the jokes are just like gay panic. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's like the lowest of the low. Well, he was it's at one shit, point thought of... That, like, I was gonna say it's it's shit that like white conservative people like my parents think is funny. Mm-hmm. He yeah. was uh, like at one point considered like you know I mean post um, Saturday Night Fever you know I mean you had like Urban Cowboy and uh, what was um, well there was staying staying alive I mean let's yeah. not forget wasn't Stay he in uh, huh. Well, stay tuned for that. We'll watch it eventually. Uh, um, it's terrible, man. Wasn't he also in um, Perfect with Jamie Lee Curtis? Wasn't that? Yep. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Uh, That's no, another no, potential no, stay tuned. Wonderful gifts. <laughs> yeah. But Blowout. Blowout's the one you wanted. The Brian De Palma movie. That was That's uh, a great movie. Yeah. Um, so along comes John Travolta in his career upswing that uh, new wind in his sails. And so then he's just in everything, right? Because it's it. I, I like the fact that he and Nicolas Cage eventually ended up in Face Off, because it seemed like Nicolas Cage experienced a similar uh, career resurgence, and they're both kind of in the same place now. You know, they're like yeah, the con- they two. Con- su- they have very similar uh, career trajectories. Very similar. Yeah. Well, yeah, they switched bodies, so why you know. <laughs> why wouldn't why, why wouldn't it be kind of similar in a john woo a movie yeah the, yeah because how many times did travolta end up working with john woo was it just the, the two times in in broken arrow and face off uh i think so i think that's it yeah yeah because okay. i mean eventually after uh mission impossible 2 it seems like um uh john woo did like wind talkers Wind talkers, like, yeah. Who, what yeah. action dude does wind talkers? Because everybody had to do their World War Two movie, or sorry, yeah, that was World War Two, and then, um, and then paycheck, you know, and then, and then out. Because <laughs> it seems like the Hollywood uh, process somehow, maybe through the editing, I don't know, like bleached the character out of John Woo. The stuff that you loved him for when he was making Hong Kong cinema was gone out of it. You, you couldn't tell the style. Yeah. And I think he made the worst mission impossible movie that mission impossible too. I, like yeah. I feel like that's just Hollywood eating people alive. Yeah. Yeah. Which they, which it does. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least he had somewhere to go back to and still continue to make movies. And like Michaela was saying, I think uh red cliff is regarded as like a, you know, I mean, a, a, it was a sizable hit. You know, yeah. I think, right? Yeah, it was a big deal. The follow up that he did, I don't think was. And so then it's like, well, you know, where where's John Woo now? But um 
Uh, so broken arrow, it turns out is a phrase that who knows, I'm assuming that grand Yost like researched the shit out of this and he knows what he's talking about. What is a broken arrow? <laughs> he just made it up. You're saying, man, yeah, the movies are lying to me. <laughs> yeah. In, in the movie we're watching, it means, uh, basically nuclear weapons that go AWOL, that go missing. Um, I don't know what's scarier, the fact that a nuclear weapon is missing or the fact that you ha- it happens so often you have a name for it. That was a trailer moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Got to explain it in the trailer. <laughs> Otherwise, they're always be like, what the fuck is a broken arrow? There's a lot of people in this movie. That was Frank Wally, right? Who? Uh, yeah. The, I mean, the, act- the actual, there is a term for a lost nuclear weapon. It's called an empty quiver. Really? <laughs> Makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, it makes more sense. You're missing your... Yeah, it makes... It's oh. like... Yeah. Well, now that's we know what we call the remake. Arrow. But that's why, you yeah. know, the quiver, arrow, broken arrow just sounds better. Like, that's true. It makes sense. Yeah, but then Coming. you got to pay all those Rod Stewart royalties, you know? <laughs> um, so John Travolta stars as a major uh, test pilot, or he's a pilot, right? alongside, uh, I'm assuming this is Air Force with uh, Christian Slater. We're introduced Mm -hmm. to them in a boxing match because this is going to set up the central dynamic for the movie, which is kind of what I said already. It's like, you know, they both, well, you get the idea, or maybe maybe I just did. I don't know. that the, The dynamic here is you've got one guy who's like, considers himself, and Ego is doing this. He's the perfect warrior. But it's also built, borne out by the fact that he is as good as he says he is. And he has met this other guy who he is kind of like, determine that this guy has the goods. He's just not trained up good enough yet. And so I'm yeah. always kind of like dangling the, well, what is that thing that, you know, you're boxing, you put your hand out and they have to hit it and you keep on pulling your hand away or whatever the hell. Uh, yeah. It's like, I don't think you know how to box. Huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. I mixed it, mixed <laughs> metaphors there. Um, they're, they're, yeah, no, you're right. They're always sparring because he sees potential in him. He's like, finally, I have a worthy adversary. He has the potential to best me, and I want to be the one to help him to get there. Because I think to him, that's just one more like win for him is that he finally like trains him to beat him. But there's also a part of him that like is sure that it'll never happen, too. Like, I think it's kind of both. Yeah, it's weird because, well, that's why you're setting up maybe maybe we can't understand that because we're not psychopaths. Apparently he is because of that one line where, uh, you know, I never killed anybody before. I don't get what the big deal is, you know, after he does. Um, so he's a psychopath, so he's basically like, yeah, I want you to be able to beat me. But I'm but the stakes are like, you know, uh, you're going to I'm going to kill you if you can't. If you're not good enough, you're going to die Basically, <laughs> and you have to kill me. So we're never going to be buddies. You have to kill me in order to otherwise I'm going to blow up the world. But it's like that. It's that dynamic that we've seen before. Where it's like a it's like a Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty thing where they're like they have a weird relationship where they're almost friends because they have that respect for each other, but they're not, they're enemies. It's like Batman it's, and the Joker. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> they understand it. two sides of the same coin. This is a John yeah. Woo uh, thing. Yeah. That he likes yeah. to explore in his movies. Um, okay. So uh, the, the plot to steal the um, nuclear missiles, right? Uh, which are flown on a B seventeen or whatever the B. What was it? It was a special. A B, well, I I don't know what they said in the movie. The actual plane is a B three stealth bomber. Okay, there you go. My dad My makes bro- parts for those. Really? Yeah. My brother was really into planes when we were kids, so I remember like knowing all about this shit when this movie came out. I was like, I know that plane. <laughs> there was a lot of times as a kid. Do you remember like take your daughter to work day? Oh, yeah. There was a lot of times I couldn't go because my dad was working on government projects and they wouldn't let people in. Oh. Yeah, I couldn't go because my dad was a fireman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did, they frowned upon that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you didn't get to do that cool movie thing, Michaela, where uh, the scientist brings in the kid for the day and they solve, like, the big problem by right? accidentally hitting a hammer and it falls at the bench and all that. You didn't get to do that? Damn. You, no, I wish. It was, you, accidentally, it was, you, you accidentally hit the big red button for everything, <laughs> everything to self-destruct. <laughs> Sean, I see all the blinking light science. Yes. <laughs> the, yeah, everyone's just looking around like, those haven't gone off before. What do they mean? I don't know. They're not labeled. 
<laughs> I like the way they just know what it means. They know yeah, that, that that's one. Smart. Yeah, that that's one how you means. know they're smart. Yeah, because they know what the blank blinking light means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, well, the, uh, of course, Travolta's character double crosses his buddy, uh, Christian Slater and ejects him from the plane, uh, during a little tense fight scene as they're wrestling for control of the gun. And, um, they end up, uh, well, the plane ends up crashing. The payload is dropped and both guys get out. Of course, uh, um, Slater is ejected into the, this is the Utah desert, right? Yeah. Yes. And he meets up with a spunky park ranger. And this is uh, Samantha Mathis. Samantha Mathis, yes. Who we would Wait, know I from. Was, I was going to ask. Is she Mario on, Brothers. She, she has Mario to be Brothers? on the wall. Is she on the wall? Because we did Mario Brothers. She is? Yeah. yeah. Well, she was also in Buried. She was the voice of uh, Ryan Reynolds' wife. That's right. Ah. Yeah. Uh, yep. So she is on the wall. Actually, well, fuck. Uh, isn't uh, Travolta? Travolta is on the wall. Right, it's got to be. It's got to be. Travolta was saw? in uh, the Devil's Reign and uh, the Fanatic, oh, which we did. Right. So welcome aboard, sir. Well, has and Face Off been done before? We haven't done Face Off. What? No. I don't we've steered. We've we've generally steered away from the big budget action movies. We go for like the lower budget, goofier ones. But yeah, but the premise of that movie is a low budget movie premise. Of course, I say that, but we did do Rambo three. We also did Broken Arrow. We also did RoboCop, and that of course puts Clarence Boddicker himself, Kurtwood Smith, also on the nice. Saturday Night Freak Show wall Kurt of fame. Wood. Yeah, so there you go. Wow, this movie uh, put uh, well. There's also a guy named Gary Epper who played Miller in broken arrow this is courtesy of mf mad the keeper of the saturday night freak show wall of fame uh who says he was in um, yeah uh he was in captain america hook and broken arrow but he's on the the hall the hallway not the wall the wall of fame we got three inductees for off this one movie so good pick damn uh holly thank you what about bob hold on uh, bob gunton yeah that's pritchett how many have we had? He seems to like show up and shit. Well, he would be the warden from the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Uh, so you know this guy. You've seen him a bunch of times. Uh, Dead Silence he was in. We haven't done that either. Um, yeah. I don't think we've done in Bob enough Bob Gunton movies. Everybody in this movie is like a recognizable face. This is what I kind of miss about the 90s era uh, action movie. Um, yeah. because it goes deep. I mean, like all the, the bit players are like, Hey, that's the dude from, uh, uh, not Seinfeld's boss, but, um, <laughs> the guy from the Lord of illusions and basic instinct and all that. Uh, yeah, he's in there. I'm dropping his name, but, uh, yeah, just like everybody, Delroy Lindo's in it. Uh, Frank Wally, as we said, um, Kerwood Smith, all the, uh, the bit players, yeah, we just need uh, how what's his long? Name? Al Al how Long, we- the 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 Chinese terrorist from every action movie of the 1980s. <laughs> I know. If yeah. only if only he'd shown up. Yeah. Do we ever establish where his last movie was? Because he was in everything. I'm, I think he's on the right wall. Here. I yeah. mean, he's gotta be. Uh, like oh, the- his last movie was called Awesome Asian Bad Guys. <laughs> <laughs> in, in 2014. So. Oh wow. I mean, he, that's peak, right? Mm. <laughs> well, Travolta gets to act goofy and weird in this movie. That's the uh, his appeal, I assume, for being in this, right? He's yeah, just gonna... I, remember, I remember the draw for this movie. When I saw trailers, I was just amazed because it was the first time I'd ever seen Travolta playing a bad guy. And I was like, yeah. I have to experience this movie. I have to. And I saw it in the drive-in, actually, which was awesome. Nice. Yeah, it was a good driving movie. Give me some of his best lines. Ain't it cool? <laughs> said, God damn, what a rush. <laughs> that one's my personal favorite. And also a couple really good uses of fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's got a good, he yells fuck real well. Yeah, Will you please really well. <laughs> not shoot at the thermonuclear weapons? And uh, what was the when other? He, when he like breaks the guy's throat and he's like, hush, mm-hmm. hush, hush. hush. <laughs> He smokes a cigarette all weird. He says crazy shit. This is what he's your doing, brain it's, it's, pressing against your skull feels like. What was that line? You know, he's, that was, he's like, your brain presses against your skull and it feels like this. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's always in turtlenecks, even in the desert. Yeah. So there's so there's a fun uh, tidbit about that. Um, <laughs> The, uh, no, there is. A turtleneck tidbit. <laughs> the the U.S. military demanded that after Travolta is declared a traitor, that he not wear his uniform any longer, which is why he instantly changes his clothes. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. And what's more evil than a turtleneck? I, I mean, that's so true. <laughs> not much. This is it one does of feel like when you're wearing a turtleneck like that, you should be stroking like a cat while you're yeah. explaining your evil <laughs> plan, you know? Or, yeah. Or of a little mic and talking to a large audience about computers. Either way. <laughs> that too. I mean, he's a different type of evil. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it becomes up to uh, um, Christian Slater and Samantha Mathis. Samantha Mathis, by the way, trivia about her. You know, she's the president of the uh, SAG AFRA, is it Af- APCA? APCA? Whatever. AFRA. AFRA Union. Do you know? She- really? Oh, yeah. Her mom. Is famous nice. to me. It's BB BB Besh, and she was uh, Doctor Carol Marcus in Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. I hope every time you say that title, when you're just generally talking to <laughs> someone, you you scream the last part. I, I like had, to think that he says that when he's alone. I had three wishes. One of them would be that you have to do that. Yeah, every and time. That Endlessly fun. entertaining. That would be the wish that would make the monkey's paw curl up, man. <laughs> yeah, just, uh. Uh, well, they have to, uh, they, of course, uh, meet under uh, 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 tense circumstances. Everybody's pointing guns at each other. We get one of those John Woo scenes where she's got the gun pointed at his, or no, he's got the gun pointed at her head, and she's got the knife at his throat. Very tense. That, yes. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's a John Woo moment also, I suppose, right? Yes. That happens. Always. There's always a lot of standoffs going on. What's your favorite <laughs> action scene in this movie? Um, I mean... I like the nuke when the nuke blows up. Yeah, that was a good one. Because there's a lot of little good little moments right there. Yeah, I do like Christian Slater like, shooting down the helicopter. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. He uses and a I gun just, like, to... the whole, like the last like the last whole ten minutes of this movie is a pretty decent sequence of a lot of explosions. Train fight. Yeah, train fight. Well, it and has actually, a kind of a it, there's like an over the topness to it, which uh, kind of helps it out because the it adds this energy, kind of an excitement to the you know it's not just uh, you know the bad guy gets you know blown out the back of the uh, train car, he gets to yeah. see the 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 missile coming at him uh stands up and close up to meet it like and has a hey, like smiling you know, gets punched <laughs> by the thing out the back of the the train car into the fire explosion body parts go well at least i saw his body you know you got to keep how on you want your bad guy to go out that's yeah uh, that's how it should be done but a lot there's of the a, fight scenes smiling. were done cool like that too where you know there's yeah. people swinging off at things and there, as I say, there's a lot of really, um, there's, there's a lot of really great, um, uh, there's a lot of really like venues for, for this movie. We've got like on the helicopter, we've got on a plane, we've got on a train. Like there's just a lot of really great like action um, uh, scenery, you know, which I, I, I don't know. I like mixing it up. I like that there's a little bit of everything. I think it gives a good dynamic. And Isn't I really like a lot of good set pieces. And a mine, yes, that was the other one. I was like, "What's the other one?" It's it's a mine, yeah. Um, and Christian Slater and Samantha Mathis actually did most. Of, I'm going to say most for for '90s. I don't know what most in '90s means, but most of their stunts, which I appreciated. That was actually her like hanging off the train. Like they did a lot of their own shit, which I thought was pretty cool. Well, this John is Woo loves to see people like swing around doorways, doesn't he? Yeah, it looks. He likes cool. movement. He likes movement in the action. Yeah. Yeah. Usually slowed down, which I'm surprised they didn't do like the slow motion cuts on some of that stuff. But uh, Zack Snyder, of course, would just uh, make a career out of doing that later on. You know, it's interesting to me watching this movie, the um, relative. Because I think like the next big guy in the action genre was like Michael Bay, for better or worse, that, you know, up the tempo 
of the shots. And I guess that's what felt actually kind of different to me watching this was how much the pace was controlled by like his shots actually did go on long enough so you could see what was happening, you know? Yes, he has. It's, it's, his shots are much more. Um, it's very different. They're more extended than what would be normal in today's shooting and editing from most major action directors. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I will say I appreciate about this movie that you can see what's happening during every action sequence. It's not like the shape yeah. of cam, like we're not confident in what we're doing, so we're going to hide it by just doing quick cuts and moving the camera all crazy. Mm-hmm. You can see every bit of action that happens in this movie. Yeah, the, the only time that I, I thought to myself that I would have appreciated if it was more like the quick cuts, maybe a little more like like how we get with James Bond movies now, was um, the scene when they're fighting in the cockpit and they're like strapped to their chairs, like fighting each other. I was like, it looked a little lethargic. I think if it was made now, it'd be a lot quicker and a lot more like martial arty, I guess. I yeah. don't know. Because it, it was like, like I said, it was a little lethargic. But other than that, like I really appreciated how you could actually see what was happening in the fight scenes. Yeah. The faces Travolta was making in that scene were ridiculous. So great. <laughs> Yeah, he has like a pretty good like villain face because it's all wide eyes and teeth, you know. Yeah. Um, and that strong jaw. Yeah, he's like yes. he's like borderline snarling <laughs> in this movie. Like he doesn't make the noise, but he's like borderline snarling. He's got a good villain head. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's a very square head. He's uh, <laughs> so his plan is basically uh, his or his motivation is that he has been overlooked for uh, promotion, right? to colonel relatable which we haven't <laughs> but they haven't I get it. <laughs> they haven't explicitly <laughs> said we're and we're very sorry for, sorry for that sergeant um but in his uh in his case it's like did they pass him over because he would fail the psych exam i mean <laughs> he's he comes he, off, <laughs> he comes off like a normal guy at the beginning you know it's like yeah okay you know he's got his uh heart in the right place and all this but it's like no he yeah. plans to steal the the missiles and blackmail the American government in order to get rich, and he's recruited like a bunch of his. He's staffed because I, I actually kind of did like that uh, plot dynamic that he's using the funding from the Bob Gunton character, but mm-hmm. he's actually staffed all the people that he's using are like people that he knows, and so eventually he's just like I'm taking over this operation. <laughs> yeah, this is actually something that we're doing, and you don't really count at all. <laughs> kind of like Bane, right? Bane did that. Bane. Because you gave me this money, you think you have power over me? Um, <laughs> so Christian Slater and Samantha Mathis have to track across the desert and try to stop this. There's several car chases. There's uh, helicopter chases. They have to come to trust each other. Um, they're in, they end up going to this mine because uh, part of the... Uh, plot that Travolta has engineered is that he's going to detonate a nuclear weapon. Yeah, he's got to prove he's serious. Yeah, mm-hmm. so what's uh what's uh, how's this all going to take place? What's he what's he got going on here? So basically he has found an abandoned copper mine and his intent is to um blow the mine to show that he's serious cuz he obviously he stole two bombs. So one is he intends to blow it up and the other one he's going to threaten to blow up a major city with it if he doesn't get his money. And so, you know, Slater, of course, gets there first, right? Because there's some daring do in between a couple of Humvees and uh, rigged explosives being thrown, which are basically like a gas can with a, a flare strap to it, blowing stuff up. Um, Love it. He gets there first, and then so then there becomes like a lot of uh, dialogue between uh, Travolta and Slater on the CB radios, um, where they all like everybody through this movie. The 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 dialogue I thought was uh, well, I mean not not bad to be priceless, um, but just kind of like on the nose, you know. Like, I am a military officer. You have to listen to me. I understand why we're doing that. You have to take the cover off and cut this wire and do this thing. You know, they're explaining. Like, they always have a character there so they can explain what the hell they're doing, why everything works (laughs) the way that it does. And then Travolta tells Slater, like, every all of his fucking plan. He's monologuing. Why not? 
He's but, the I bad mean, guy. Yeah. It's a very yeah, cartoony I mean, bad guy movie. Yeah, that's a bad guy trope is that you give yeah. away your whole plan. That's, yeah, that's like, always existed. I was like, Anne, you're describing like all the great 90s action movies. <laughs> <laughs> the great this ones, is, the fun this ones. This is why we're here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, I, I like that at least in this, it follows along with the character arcs that they started in the beginning. Their whole thing it, when they're sparring is he's like almost trying to help him win. He's like, you're watching my hand. You got to watch my arm. You got to watch my shoulder. Cause that's where it's coming from. So it's, it's the same thing. He's telling him like, this is my plan. Like we're still sparring. You're, you just have to pay attention. You're just not fighting the way you can fight. Like it's, it's, I like that they're continuing with that. Yeah. They you stick know? with that metaphor. He's doing yeah. the rope dope The what? You know, yeah. all that, all the way through the movie. So that was a pretty good setup. I, yeah, I liked it a lot. I was like, okay, it's taking this 90s trope and making it like like tolerable. You know, I'm like, okay, this actually makes sense for this character. Yeah, he has a, um, there was a moment that, I mean, it makes no logical sense. Uh, you know, it's like if you were actually trying to pull this goal off that you would tell the guy trying to stop you that, you know, you set the bomb for 30 minutes and I actually changed that. I changed it to 13 minutes. I'm going to give you 13 minutes. And like, what? Well, like, why would you tell him that? It's because exactly of that thing. He's like playing fair, <laughs> kind yeah. of like, I want to tell you that I changed it and made it harder for you, but at least I'm telling you, I'm not just going to blow it up. I'm going to tell you, you got 13 minutes. I yeah. love that the bomb has a readout on it. That's actually ticking down the time because it's yeah, a, it's a missile, notes. right? Like, no one's going to see that. <laughs> unless, yeah, well, that, that's always on there, unless, you know, something like this comes around. Yeah, so someone can program in 13 minutes and it kind of counts down. And you're like, oh my God, I only have until. Yeah. Yeah, how are the dudes on the I mean, asteroid going to dis destroying Earth? How are they going to know that they're, you yeah. know, they're going to die? Their bomb's going you, off in like Do you seconds. see a lot of nukes on a regular basis, Colin? Do you know that they all don't have that ticking countdown? It defies logic. I assume Boom. they're not there. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, does a romance blossom between Samantha Mathis and Christian Slater? I don't care. No. I mean, no. Honestly, don't care. They uh, they like to, it's the 90s, so they have to imply that there's like a sexual tension. And then in the end, they kind of allude to that. Oh, there could be something blossoming from all of this, but... Eh. But they nope. barely do it, and I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that's He's why they kiss, went that way good. in the. Uh, it, by this time in the '90s, it was such kind of trope of uh, of action movie. Even though Speed, there's like actual flirtation going on between the two of uh, Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves, which I kind of like that. You know, uh, because it's it's well written in Speed, it works. Yeah, but it's always the idea, I guess, in action movies that you're throwing people together and they're going through like this. In, in extremely intense emotional uh, yeah. thing together, they just kind of naturally wind up to. It's always fantastic that they're always these single people. You know, they're always single and in the prime of their lives when they meet. You know, so there's no complications. Yeah, it's, it's never, it's never like two married people, and then this ends up like complicating their entire lives. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody has no. the girlfriend at home and the kid, you know, whatever. It's like, nope, I am. This has my, been my job, and this is what I do, and this is what I my job, say, what I do. <laughs> All these people are married to their jobs. That's mm -hmm. why. She takes park rangering very seriously. Yeah. She, they, she knows I about think, the endangered dirt and everything, yeah. I yeah, think she does. She mostly works by herself, and I think when you work by yourself, like, your environment is your coworker, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause she's out. In a, this is a, a national park, right? I, I'm not sure which one it's supposed to be, but uh, yeah, miles and miles and miles of uh, maces. I'll bet yeah. when nobody else is around, she's doing the Mary Catherine Gallagher thing. She's like, <laughs> but she's doing that. Well, she's in the desert, so we know she's probably a little smelly. Well, <laughs> I mean, probably. It's very hot. It's very hot out there. Superstar. Although um, she's freezing on when she comes out of the water, which I was like, aren't you in the desert? Isn't it warm? But what else? That's fine. Water's cold, Holly. Not in the desert. Yes. It was inside a mountain. Hot springs, man. Well, yeah, because there was the Broken Arrow theme park ride that I'm like, yeah, Fox owns uh, or Disney owns Fox now. You know, we could have this happen where they have to escape through an underground. Um, You're in a mine cart. Dream. Yeah. 
It's not even a stream. It's like it's rushing water. They do have that ride. It's it's uh, Thunder Mountain. Okay. Just rebranded the Broken Arrow ride. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Shove a nuke in there. You can be totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> oh, run the new animatronics of Travolta and Christian Slater. <laughs> all like all like Hall of President style. I would yes. love. That. Yeah. Oh, that says, was- yeah. Ain't it cool? <laughs> yeah, but he just doesn't like. Yeah, ain't it cool? Yeah, ain't it cool. Yeah, ain't it cool? You know that uh, that line. God, I want this ride. Disney what about, this is, this is going in. This is going in something. It's just like you want to go on the Broken Era. <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> I mean, they did it to Twister. Why can't you do it to Broken Era? Did they do a Twister uh, run? Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was like a Twister experience. So you like watch. Like the tornado happened at like it's the a stunt driving. show. It's a stunt show. Yes, thank you. I mean, if they can reverse engineer a Pirates of the Caribbean franchise out of a ride, they can definitely make a ride out of Broken Arrow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, that line "Ain't it cool?" inspired the website "Ain't it cool?" that like infamously ruled the internet from like 1990 what eight through uh, I don't know. I mean, I suppose it's probably still going. I mean, it's still going, but it's not. It's nothing now. Yeah. Um. I never looked at it. I remember when it was a big deal. It was a big deal because they had like, you know, spies would write in and give uh, reviews of movies that they'd seen at test screenings. That was like a brand new. I mean, I was reading it all the time because it was like, holy yeah. fuck. <laughs> um, all inspired by Broken Arrow. There you go. Um, so that's like so, your, your yeah. midpoint action scene then is the det- the underground detonation of the uh, the first nuke. Then they load the second nuke on a train, and it's headed to Denver, right? Christian Slater has to figure out that, like, oh, this guy, he's playing the rope-a-dope. He says he's going one way. He's actually going to Denver. So we have to race to Denver in order to stop the nuclear annihilation and kill everybody on the train. How did Howie Long end up in this movie? Was he, like, uh, I mean, was he the sports announcer dude? He, he played. He was he played a football, football player. He was defensive tackle for yeah. the Raiders mm. for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and his and his part in this was really small. He had like one line, and they liked him so much they extended his his part. Really? Yep. He does look like broke ass Schwarzenegger in this movie. Like from yep. a distance, you're like, wait, is that no? Mm-hmm. Well, you put him in military fatigues, and he's got the crew cut, you know, or whatever the flat top yeah. crew cut yeah. thing. It's like, okay, he looks like the uh, you know a jarhead. So yeah. I mean, it works. Um. You know what else we need to figure out where this originated? Was this a John Woo thing or a Robert Rodriguez thing about this era in uh, action movies? The cool guys running or walking away from the explosion. They're going off behind them. They do flinch in this movie. Somebody, I think it was Robert Rodriguez, did the, we're going to walk away and not even react as the bomb goes off and fills the whole screen with fire behind us. Um, but there are screens full of fire in this movie and people jumping out of the way um, constantly yes they end up practical uh, too which is nice mm-hmm. yeah because there was a lot of model work in this yeah, yeah it's a lot of model work the trains the helicopters yep it's not entirely obvious or is it but there were some times when like uh the, you know the, as the train was going through the tunnel i'm like oh look at the little like you know uh fake grass you know like you see on the like a model <laughs> railroad and somebody had built up the, you know. Right. After the helicopter crashes into it, you can see, like, oh, tiny train. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was wondering when you were talking about the um, stunt work and Samantha Mathis doing it. Like, did they were they able to do digital wire removal at this point in time? I'm not sure. I, I'll bet they were because, um, I mean, they could do digital face stuff in Titanic when they were doing that movie. I got to imagine to be able to erase some wires. They have to, because I've seen, I saw uh, Christian Slater jump out of a helicopter in a jump that was not going to make it onto a train. <laughs> and so he had to have been wearing some sort of <laughs> wiring that that uh, was erased later. Uh, Maybe that, that was like that the was first the thing only... they figured out how to do with the digital technology was wire, Probably. wire removal. It's like we have this little thing we got to get rid of. Swipe. <laughs> and that changed action movies forever. <laughs> yes. You could actually have, be wearing harnesses and then we could just digitally erase it later. Yeah. Back in the old days, it would just blow a dude up. And yeah. Hope, yeah, yeah. However the far good old flew. days. <laughs> yeah. The good old days of stunts. Like, uh-huh. we're going to blow you up. Like yep. a metal storm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
But it's still, it's that Road Warrior one, man. That, that's the fucking, that, that guy's nuts. Dead. That guy's fucking dead. <laughs> uh, whatever, how many yeah. times he does a you somersault. You can otherwise. That person is dead. Um, yeah. Well, that barrels us towards the climax of this movie um, where we're going to have to find out who is the superior warrior. Um, yeah, because I guess uh, Samantha Mathis does prove her uh, metal uh, several times she outwits the bad guys, she, you know, because I think at one point uh, Travolta actually says, like, you know, uh, you know, you would take the bullet rather than, um, yeah. you know, he's, he, he tells her, he's like, you have more balls than he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, but once she is, uh, well, she escapes from that situation. She's not rescued. She escapes. You know, she does this on her own. She's um, jumping around all over the place, swinging out of doors, jumping yeah. off things, kicking people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really did like that move when they when uh, Christian Slater shows up in the helicopter and she instantly swings out around by the door. I was like, that's pretty badass. I love that. Yeah, just to know that, like, oh shit, this is what's going on. I can't get out of here, so he can shoot. You know, you know what the plan yeah. is. Yeah. Just by like, boom, this is what's going on. She's a woman. Well, they're of very action. aware, very aware action sequences that make sense. It's kind of refreshing. Yeah. Like, I know where everybody is, pretty much. The geography of the fighting and the action scenes is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there were a couple times he was doing wild stuff with the camera where he would cross the 180-degree uh, line, but he'd show you, you know, I'm going to do it. So when it yeah. wasn't completely uh, disorienting when the camera was over there. Um, oh, yeah. The movie is scored by uh, Hans Zimmer. Um, Love the score. Yeah, are you serious or are you joking right now? I can't tell. No, I I love the score mostly because fun. mostly because a, a, a good chunk of it ends up in Scream Two. Yes, <laughs> as as Dewey's theme and some other background music. But yes, I do love that. Dun 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 dun. Love yeah, it. Yeah, I dig it. That's great. All right then. I was less enamored. <laughs> Colin's like I was less enamored by this. Well, I do like what Hans Zimmer has done later on. Uh, but this one, it was just like, I, I sat there for a lot of it thinking the the music didn't fit the movie somehow. Like he's just playing stuff and I'm like, does this actually yeah, fit think, what's happening? I think it fits. Cause it's almost, it's almost cheeky, which John Travolta's character is. It was very, I'm, very dramatic. Also very dramatic. But yeah. yeah. I, I think I more didn't like the sound mixing because it would shoot up really loud at certain points and then go down so quickly. It literally felt like someone fucking with the volume dial constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Cause I did think that too. There was times on the train where I'm like, maybe it's the mix. I don't know. I had some kind yeah. of concern with the music the whole way through. Although, you know, like I said, Hans Zimmer became like the de facto guy to do your military um, anthems. Right. Uh, for a lot of movies, uh, was it started with Crimson Tide or something like? I mean, he did shit before that, you know. And now he's become like he's the John Williams of our age, I think. Yeah, he you does know? every Christopher Nolan movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. and everything else. I mean, if it's a big movie, it's like Hans Zimmer is the guy you go to, and all of his um, proteges are doing everything else. They all worked at some uh, studio that he made. I can't remember. It was like Media Ventures or something like that. And I remain convinced why do they always sound like shit yeah i know it's like for for you come out of there learning some of the coolest stuff and every company sounds like fucking shit mini adventures come on down because i've heard other scores that sound like han zimmer scores and it's like nope it wasn't han zimmer it's like klaus badalt or whatever and you're like well yep. and then you look it up and it's like oh he studied with han zimmer is that, is that real because that's a great bad guy name. yeah he yeah. did like all the pirates of the caribbean movies yeah which sound uh, like han zimmer movie or han yeah, zimmer yeah. music I did, I did them them wait who does who does bruckheimer movies han zimmer han zimmer i was gonna say yeah okay yeah. do you ever like assume a movie would have a han zimmer though and then you go and you look and it's like tyler bates or someone and you're like oh <laughs> gross like well won't be tuned in for that one. Like, I mean, those are basically the guys who are working. It's like Hans Zimmer, Tyler Bates, uh, Bear McCreary, right? These are the names that I see like on every damn movie. It's like those Carter are the- Burwell. He's the worst one. Is he still oh, around? God. He's still yeah, working? he's he does Coen Brothers stuff. Mm. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. He did the really abysmal True Grit score. Ugh. Oh, I, like I want to hear more. I want to hear more from, and her name escapes me now. The one that did Joker. What is her name? Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I can't I don't remember, know but yeah. I'll Google it. But I want to hear more from her. That score was. Well, it's like this uh, kind it's of fucking amazing. Yeah, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> it's She's Hilder. Funny. We just call her Hilder. Yeah, <laughs> that's as far as we're going. Yeah, cause she's Swedish. She's got some of that black metal in her blood. I think she's uh, got some of that. Um, uh, what's his name? Who passed away? Yeah, um, I, that's who I was thinking of. Right, the guy who did uh, she, Mandy. She got some. Uh, yeah, and uh, who did Sicario. Mandy and, uh, Sicario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's I, awesome. I actually think Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross do really good scores too. Yeah, yeah I like them sure. too. But I mean, these guys are all kind of. Uh, oh, that's uh, Johan Johansson was uh, the yeah, Sicario yeah, yeah. Mandy guy. Um, but they all do like these kind of tonal, uh, things and not like big full orchestra stuff. Like, uh, well, I don't even know. I mean, Hans Zimmer is doing orchestral stuff, but there's a lot of like electronica yeah. and stuff like that in his, yeah. uh, in his stuff. Um, all right. So in the end of the movie, uh, you know, I mean, what's the, um, I guess we already talked about what the dynamic is and we know that the good guys are going to save the day, right. By blasting the bad guy out the back of the train there's a decoupling of the cars and mm-hmm. then- yeah. uh, john woo actually wanted christian slater's character to die in this but he was outvoted <laughs> yeah because i think i think more people should have died more main character should have died. a lot of people died there was one guy who got hit by a uh, helicopter blades which i was actually surprised that was about. cool as they was- take the helicopter flying alongside and says people up on top of the helicopter and they take the chopper like the blades right along the top of the uh they're able to keep it level on the top of the the train cars hit that one guy i thought it was going to be more graphic than it was but he just kind of gets split open a little bit i mean but just can you imagine that just hitting hitting with a blade it's like boom it was still a nice surprise yeah i think that was probably the goriest thing that happened in this movie right yeah maybe there was a lot of uh there was a lot of bullet dancing in this movie which is the uh yeah as they're getting pelted by a thousand rounds yes yeah, yeah. the armor said that they they shot about sixty thousand rounds in this movie damn yeah That's a lot <laughs> a shit ton. Is there any- they should have well i was gonna say they should have shot a few more at the good guys because they were shooting a lot in this movie just not when they you know could have stopped the whole thing from happening the bad guys i mean the the, yeah. the henchmen are not very good in this movie but you know, yeah what you can do now, is- here's a here's a question for you so John Travolta was given the choice of which character he wanted to play, Hale or Deacon, and he went with Deacon. Do you think that was the right choice for him? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think that this movie would have been as well? How different do you think it would have been if he had chosen Hale? Like it would have been boring. It depends on who you got as the bad guy. I mean, what, you put, like, Bruce Willis in that part or something. I actually thought you could put Bruce Willis, uh, maybe a younger Bruce Willis as uh, the Christian Slater part. Mm -hmm. I don't think Christian Slater could have carried that role, honestly. No. No, I I think if Travolta had picked the good guy, I don't think they would have gone with Christian Slater for the bad guy. I think they would have gone with someone else. Yeah, yeah. Christian Slater's too short. You can't just be a short I don't even know if I like Christian Slater for the part that he played. I mean, it's like he's in it because he's a star name, but it's like, I don't know. I just never really believed him. You know, can we can we trade him off with Frank Whaley? No, that'd be even worse. I mean, that'd be great. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Frank Whaley action star. (laughs) Yeah. How come that never happened? How can we never got Frank Whaley? (laughs) For the reasons you said. Oh, come on. (laughs) That's why. What was the? Was he in a movie? Was it Career Opportunities with Jennifer Connelly? Were they stuck in a shopping mall or something? What am I thinking of? I think so. Frank Whaley, of course, is from The Doors. I was gonna say we don't. Yeah, I don't know if we have the time to go over Frank Whaley's yeah, okay. filmography. It's quite extensive. Was he swimming with sharks? Yes. Okay, there you go. Uh, okay, listener. Well, I tell you what, we've been hedging our bets on whether or not we would recommend that you watch Broken Arrow. Uh, but we're going to tell you, we're going to go around the room and, uh, let you, we're going to review the movie and let you know what we thought of it. But first you're going to have to bear with us. We're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need the help of our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got a little turtleneck on, too. <laughs> He's just trying to hide his uh, uh, leaking scabs. It's really the only reason. Whatever works. He's taken up chain smoking because of this movie, though. <laughs> I mean, come on. Travolta makes it look cool. <laughs> he really does. Yeah. It's just, you just got to like spread your fingers out as far as you can. I mean, I would say like his whole career has been making smoking look cool, pretty much. Yeah. It does Ain't make it look cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that's a cigarette commercial right there. It's like, Ain't it cool? Yeah. <laughs> I would <Candles>. buy a <laughs> <laughs> well, we should probably let the good folks at home know how they can get a hold of us uh, so they can write in. We'll read your comments on the air. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, you can write in by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Twitter at Saturday Night freak show travis legler writes in and says this movie broken arrow is a ton of fun it's classic 90s cheese ball action john travolta is a blast in this movie and the best part of it he sums up the fun of the movie with the quote i said god damn what a rush <laughs> that's true he says the movie is kind of like face off another travolta and woo film just turn off your brain have a drink and enjoy the ride for sure uh, Nicholas Capriola says, absolute 90s trash and perfect for it. It's over the top action and cheesy one liners. It's 90s gold. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean Rogers says, you're out of your mind. Yeah. Ain't it cool? He says, I love this <laughs> shitty movie. Samantha Mathis is adorable. She is. Yeah, she truly is. Chris Passion says, Samantha Mathis is almost perfect looking. Yeah, I like, I like She's her red hustling. And uh, Matthew Ola says, please compare if you like Samantha Mathis and Christian Slater's relationship better in Pump Up the Volume or here in Broken Arrow. I will uh, I will take you one more and say their best duo performance was in Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. <laughs> yeah. I knew That's that was going to come back. I would say, back. too. <laughs> Just give me some Robin Williams then. Because- <laughs> Andy Curry. And to great. Oh, this wow. is a sign, Colin. You should watch the movie. Wow. <laughs> it's a good movie. I will, I will say I just recently rewatched Pump Up the Volume. I watched that a lot when I was a kid and I rewatched it recently. I still love it. It's still great. But I mean, the dynamic in that, it's pure teen angst. So it's so different than this movie. So it's like you can't even compare them. Like, <laughs> I'll go with the Pump Up the Volume. <laughs> yeah. And if you're going, if you're just basing it on like their chemistry and stuff, like Pump Up the Volume is 10 times better, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Uh, B movie poster vault writes in and says regarding broken arrow. It's definitely one of the airtime Hills of the unending career roller coaster. That is John Travolta. It's big, loud and endearingly dumb movie kind of has been eclipsed by face off in the pantheon of dumb Travolta flicks, but it's a good brain neutral movie. Yeah. I like endearingly dumb. Yeah. That's a really good (laughs) synopsis. I like that. (laughs) Just want to pat it on its little head. Robin <laughs> Lineman Silverberg writes in and says, I saw this movie because there were very few disaster movies that try and destroy my hometown of Denver, which was kind of disappointed, though, that the geography of the train headed toward Denver was all wrong, which is probably why no one ever tries to blow up Colorado. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Uh, Michael, Michael, there's been so many, <laughs> there have been so many attempts to blow up Colorado, but everyone just goes the, the wrong way. Is that, I mean, yeah. doesn't uh, Battlefield Earth take place in Denver? Uh, does it? Yeah, is yeah, that where Johnny, is? what's his name, is is he from? Really? He's up in the hills above Denver, right? Am I wrong? I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar with Colorado. Sorry. Johnny, good boy Tyler. Is that his name? <laughs> I like how you're, you're, you're familiar with the movie not colorado yes <laughs> bravo uh, sorry i'm not familiar with colorado i'm just gonna say that i'm just gonna slip that into conversations no matter what it's like sorry i'm not familiar with colorado walk away 
Mountains. Mountains, yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, in a surprising bit of coincidence to the state of the world today, I actually saw this movie at a drive-in theater, and you know what? I kind of liked it. I don't remember it being batshit nuts like a Michael Bay film, but it's definitely an over-the-top 90s action thriller. I also saw it in the drive-in. Amazing. It was fun. It was a fun one to see in the drive-in, for sure. Why is this not being done with, like, a, a double feature of Face Off as, like, a drive-in feature? It really should be. Mm-hmm. Too much woo. Never too much. That would that would that be the woo woo double feature? Yeah, woo! the perfect amount of woo. <laughs> the perfect. This is. We should set this up just based on these slogans alone. Yeah. <laughs> Only uh, at cool movie theaters do they do stuff like that. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, about last week's ma- movie, which was Pet Cemetery Two, C.J. Lewis writes in and says, "Church was." Oh, I got to count this. He's got the greater than one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times greater than Zoe. No one's disagreeing. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Alex Nash says this one is a Halloween favorite of mine since I was a kid. I think it walks that fine line of cheesiness and horror brilliantly. And come on, who doesn't want to see Mr. Krabs as a zombie drooling mashed potatoes while laughing maniacally and keep up the awesome work? I forgot Clancy Brown was the voice of Mr. Krabs. Me too. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. funny. <laughs> it kind of puts it in a whole new light, you know? God damn it. I wish I'd known that while I was watching the movie. I actually knew that, too. Like, I haven't watched SpongeBob, but I saw he was on uh, Leonard Malton has a podcast, and they talked to Clancy Brown. You should listen to it if you like his stuff. SpongeBob's fucking hilarious. He's probably made more money from SpongeBob than from anything else he's ever been. Oh, absolutely. Because he was on every episode of SpongeBob. In the movies, yeah. Yeah. He's fucking SpongeBob Rich, man. For sure. Oh, wait. Before we jump to Pet Cemetery 2 again, or no, that was Pet Cemetery 2, but uh, Neil Gums wrote in about Broken Arrow and said, This is jumbled in my mind with executive decision, broken decision, or executive arrow, or whatever. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's so funny. Executive decision is like a running joke in my house because when I was younger, my dad just randomly came home with like 15 DVDs that he got like in a bin or something. That's what dads do. Yeah. And a couple of them he picked up was like the passion of the Christ, tin cup and executive decision. And it's just been a running joke in my house for years. (laughs) Like, what do you want to watch? Tin Cup? Executive decision. (laughs) (laughs) It was a running joke around this podcast for a while, too. I forget why, though. We kept bringing up an executive decision. Probably around Steven Seagal for some reason. Yeah. How come John Woo never did a Steven Seagal movie? We will never have the pleasure of knowing what that could have been like. Uh, (laughs) Says you. (laughs) Well, John Claude Van Damme. What? Um, Uh, About the previous week's movie, the beast must die. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, I watched this movie along with devil dog, the hound of hell constantly. As it always seemed to be on TV during the 1980s, pretty much like a comfortable slipper. As I listened to the podcast and the discussion of the candle and the silver test, I couldn't help but think what's if this movie was in any way, partially responsible for carpenters, the thing. But I think the thing was based on who goes there. The 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 um, I assume the blood test came from that. I don't know. I don't know. Good question. Know. Uh, Stephen. Interesting idea. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Lepitak says thanks for the shout out, Internet Radio Superstars. It was a nice surprise. I loved hearing your views on the Beast Must Die, which is better than its reputation suggests, apart from the dog costume. In an attempt to make Peter Cushing your most featured actor, can I recommend you try his Nazi zombie movie, Shockwaves, which was released the same year as Star Wars. It'll give you a lot to talk about. And uh, he also wonders who's looking after Igor in Lockdown and says Haunted Honeymoon is another werewolf who done it uh, that we should check out. I have seen Shock Waves. Uh, I've seen Haunted Honeymoon. Oh, well, there you go. All right. Uh, Peter Gatt says, uh, I always think of Michael Gambon from The Cook, The Thief, His Wife, and Her Lover. Michael Gambon is also in The Beast I Must Die. And a blast from the past about our long ago forgotten episode, Beyond the Black Rainbow. Oh, Gilbert. No. Ornelius says, 
one of my favorite movies ever. I heard about it years before it came out. I tried to watch it in theaters, but it, nothing, nowhere near me. So I finally got it on Blu-ray a bit after its release, and I was not let down. You can listen to our Beyond the Black Rainbow mo- uh, movie review by going back through your catalog. You could. Wherever you found us. You could. could. If you want to hear anger. Yeah. You could. Anger directed at me, because I loved it. There you go. Spoiled it. There it is. All right, now we're going to go around uh, the Colin, room. Colin, that's so against you. And we're G- giving out. away the ending. <laughs> we're going to uh, find out what the special secret ending, the twist ending to this episode is, as we direct all of our anger at... Michaela! <laughs> uh, Michaela, what did you think about tonight's movie? Broken Arrow. Or what do they call it? Um... <laughs> Uh, what was empty it? Quiver. Executive error. Empty quiver. What do you think empty about empty quiver? quiver? Uh, I I think I have a very high threshold of tolerance for John Travolta, so obviously I'm working with that bias going into this. Um, however, I think John Woo knows how to like unleash him in the right way. Uh, we had a discussion while we were watching this about is John Travolta a good actor or not, and we kind of landed on like, de- Sean. I think you said it best when you said it depends on what you want out of him. Yeah, And I think that's it for sure. I do think, like, the more recent stuff I've seen from Travolta, the problem is not that he's not committing. It's that he's committing to the wrong project, maybe. You know? Um, Like, with Gotti, for example, like, he's giving 110%, but it's a movie directed by (laughs) Eve Montrush. Right, but it's Gotti. He's committing to a terrible project. That's the problem. Uh, We also talked about that he... It seems like he gets miscast a lot, too, which, you know, I think that's a big problem. Um, In this movie, I love the mustache twirling cartoon villainy. Like, the only thing he was missing was, like, tying a damsel in distress to the railroad tracks, man. Like, that was the only thing he was missing. It was delightful. It was fun. Endearingly dumb is a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. I think that, like, you're not going to lose anything by watching this movie. There are definitely way dumber, way worse action movies you can watch. So definitely recommend Broken Arrow. Sean, what did you think? Um, uh, I I don't know if I can give uh, uh, an unbiased review of this. I've seen this movie a lot. Um, I've watched it uh, since it came out. Um, I watched it a lot as a kid. I've watched it uh, a lot as an adult. Um, so I don't know if it's trash. I don't know if it's bad. Uh, all I know is I like it. What's 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 this is the saying? I don't I don't know what art is, but I know what I like. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like this. Um, so uh, uh, I definitely recommend Broken Arrow. I love uh, uh, Travolta, like you said, mustache twirling. I like him going over the top as a villain. I think he's great at it, legitimately. Um, and he's able to. Um, and like you said, that's what he does. Like he Travolta will commit. Um, what the rest of the movie is doing around him kind of depends on how that performance is taken. Um, but I think it fits uh, very well in this movie. Um, uh, Christian Slater's kind of a, uh, what do I want to call him? He's kind of not stiff, but he is the opposite of Travolta's over-the-topness. I so described him as having old, like Michael J. Fox's older, cooler brother energy. Yeah. Like, he needed more of a leather jacket to pull that off, I think. Yeah. Or like, to smoke or something, but yeah. He thinks he's cooler than he is, you know? Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll give you that. A, you know, I think it is a, in, a big part of it. Is like, I, I remember in, um, in Pump Up the Volume, we see him very passionate. In this, he's not as excitable as someone in that situation maybe should be. He's very calm for everything that's happening. Yeah, he's like, very uh, in control. Yeah, my my best friend and partner just ejected me out of a plane, but you know I'm just gonna pick up, pick myself up. Walk the mission, through. the mission, right? Yeah. I, I get. I guess you gotta be for a guy who, like I said before, for people who do this, you know, flying planes with nukes and all that stuff. You gotta have some like, unless you're John Travolta, you gotta have some element of control and you know staying yeah. calm under I mean, pressure. Maybe, I guess. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's a realistic military focus. I don't know, but it's just maybe. Just Who knows? Animated at all? No, he's not. But well, I mean, what you're coming for is you're coming for John Travolta being the bad guy, and he does that very well in this movie. Uh, I still find this movie uh, immensely entertaining. Um, it does feel like, like we said, like John Woo likes to let things breathe, and it looks like for the most part he was allowed to do that in this movie. So there's some um, uh, everything takes its time in this movie. 
Um, but there's enough going on where you're just like, okay, that's fine. Uh, cause then, you know, we got nukes blasting through bad guys and, and, uh, uh, one-liners all over the place. So I had a good time with it. I still have a good time with this movie. Uh, I recommend broken arrow. Colin, what'd you think? Well, I have an interesting perspective of uh, there's like 90s me and today me. I haven't seen this in 14 years. I saw it in the theater and my expectations were different because, you know, I was in the cult of Wu. I mean, John Wu was, you know, a godlike figure who had, uh, you know, almost like reinvented what action movies are and made them exciting again. And kind of, I, maybe, you know, it was like the way that I felt about horror movies or, you know, when I saw... Um, insidious or something like that when james wan was like oh you figured out how to make them scary again it's like john Woo would figured out how to make action movies interesting again and then so i went into it like um i actually kind of i dug hard target but it felt kind of uh compromised i guess it didn't feel you know 100 percent woo and i'm like well let's see what he does this was his next movie i think right after hard target this is mm-hmm. the bigger one you know i mean he had access to uh all these um, actors, the talent pool and, you know, the resources of Fox and, you know, all that. Although I think Hard Target was put out by Universal. But um, and so I was disappointed uh, the first time, you know, when I watched it, I was like, because I went I went into it for the woo and I felt like I didn't really get the woo. Now, 14 you years didn't later, didn't the get the, movie? Yeah, I didn't get wooed <laughs> by the movie. Um 14 years later i'm watching and so as it started and it, you know you kind of get into it and like oh this is generic and kind of like any other 90s action movie and then it's like okay well what's john travolta doing here and like as the movie went on it was like okay he's the guy to watch in this movie because you know he's not in another movie you know he's not doing um like the um, alan rickman in in uh, uh robin hood right where it's like, right. that guy's in a different movie than everybody else around him, and he's standing out yeah. because of it. It's not like that. I mean, it's suited, I guess, to the tone of this movie. And you have Slater, um, you know, I mean, was this at the peak of uh, of the Christian Slater experience? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, where did it go from here? I'm not even entirely he's, sure. He's, but he's all over the place. I don't know. Yeah. Mobsters, right? When he got mobsters. That was 19... I, no, that was before that. It was Brat Pack and Young Guns 2 and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's kind of... He's morphing into an adult here and having an adult action role. Um, I don't know. He was okay. Uh, Samantha Mathis is okay. She, I mean, the, maybe better than okay because of the stuff that they're doing You know, together. There's a lot of choreography and, uh, and action. Um, and I actually did this time around because there has been, it's been so long since I've seen a John Woo movie that I actually kind of felt the presence of John Woo, especially toward the, the end of the movie. Um, I'm like, he's hanging here and doing these little character bits, um, that don't that feel idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic to the movie. And I'm like, that's John Woo. So, um, yeah, I guess I would give it, um, it's better than it's average to better than average action a big hollywood action movie from this period it's better than con air that's right i liked it better than con air what would it have been like if nicholas cage played the john travolta part we'll never know holly would you think of broken arrow um well i don't think you'll be surprised by my opinion of broken arrow i really enjoy this movie it i I, I like like Sean was saying, I've seen this a lot. I've watched a lot growing up. I haven't actually watched it a lot in the last like 10 years. Um, but I watched a lot growing up to remember the movie. Um, but yeah, you're not watching it for Christian Slater. You are watching it for John Travolta, hamming it up, being a crazy mustache twirling villain. And I love every second of it. I love the cheesy one-liners. It's got enough explosions and enough going on that it's giving me what I need from a 90s action movie. And I, I think it's so much fun. Um, I, I uh, We said earlier, I appreciate that they don't focus on the romance part of it. Um, I know that we've seen a lot of what we get from this movie, like we already saw a lot of it in speed. Um, there's a lot of similarities there that maybe speed did better, but there's just a ridiculous over the topness about it that I love. And it plays to what I want from a crazy nineties action movie. So yeah, I, I enjoy the hell out of it. Um, I've often thought, 
I've often wondered what, how it would have been different with a different leading lady, because I don't know that there was many uh, leading men for alternatives for this movie, but I know that some of the alternatives for Samantha Mathis were Halle Berry, Lauren Holly, Jennifer Aniston, and Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt turned it down so she could do Twister, and I am not mad at her for that, because I fucking love Twister. Um, and I'm actually upset because I read that Halle Berry said in an interview before that they told her she couldn't have the part because it wasn't realistic to have a black park ranger. And that makes me so angry. In 1996? I, in 1996, I was so upset by that. And I was like... <sighs> So I'm so disappointed she, to hear that. I'm so fucking disappointed to hear that. I was going to say, what year was Swordfish when she, did she do that instead? I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. But that made me sad. Um, I, but it just made me think about like how, if the movie would have been any different with a different leading lady. I don't think it would have. I think it, I think the characters still would have been played well by any of those women. So I think it would have been fine. Um, and it just brought me back to this movie is John Travolta as the villain. That's why we come for it. And it's satisfying in that aspect. And I get what I want from it. I still love it. I definitely recommend it. I think it's still fun. It holds up for me. And I think it holds up for probably most people. Cause it's a good time. So yeah, broken arrow. Definitely recommend. All right. Well, that means it's freak show approved. You got to go watch broken arrow, break out your copy, watch it tonight or tomorrow. Next week, we are going to be watching Next week. A mo- oh, 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 shit. Yeah, next week. It's next week. I'm, I'm told that it's our a big anniversary episode. That's right. It snuck right kinda, up on us. I mean, it really it feels- did, because we, we were planning for it for months, and then we're just like, hey, it's it's next it's week. It's here. Well, it was it's a big here. deal. We hit 300 episodes, but now apparently we've hit 400 episodes. Jesus. 400. That's insane. That came quick. 300 and the people under the stairs feels like it was five months ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, it goes quick. This is not like other podcasts where it's like episode 412. No, no, no. There's a season four, episode 12. This is 400. <laughs> That's insane. Consecutive weeks. Yeah. yeah. So this has been going on since yeah, like, I forgot like about that. 2016. We've never missed a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. So there you go. It's uh, next week. We're watching the movie 400. No, we're not. We're watching a movie that's chosen by... <laughs> I was going to say, we're gonna, it's chosen by Michaela, but if she picks the 400 blows, we're going to have problems. <laughs> uh, so what will we be watching next week? Michaela, 400th episode. Well, I feel a lot of pressure for this no matter better what be I good. <laughs> but, I mean, the people under the stairs was not good, so I oh, feel like oh, there's the bar, Let's make right? up for it, yeah. 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 Um, it well, three of us are going to be happy. One of us is not because we're going to do an anniversary watch of Ghost from 1990. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what has happened to the Saturday Night Freak <laughs> Show? First of all, it's Broken Arrow, then it's Ghost. It's a good thing I didn't throw that copy away that I was uh, squirreled away and have still sealed because I'm <laughs> like, one day they're going to gonna fucking do it to me. You got to watch <laughs> Ghost. So there you go. 400 <laughs> episodes. And it's all led to ghosts. It's all coming to ghost. Yep. I mean, hey, it's, we, it's, Colin, it's been coming Home Alone's for a while. Been on this show. What's that? Home Alone has been on this show. I know. Kind it's of, Home Alone kind of and Ghost. Up. That's where we're at. We, we survived. Hook, we I mean, survived Home Alone. We yep. survived. Yeah. Woody Allen movies. Okay, Lister, as long we hope you're coming along for the ride. I mean, we we know you want to hear about ghosts. We'll make it fun. <laughs> it's going to be a great episode. Right I, in. I right in with all your yeah. Okay, well, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.